JF Stretford Paddock, Ammonia 2, Manchester United 3. The Reds making pretty hard work of it mm. over in Cyprus. Joining me for the live review is Mr. Joe Smith. Make sure you're getting involved in the chat and the comments. Joe, a win is a win, but considering this team are ranked 242nd in the world, I yeah. think you told me before, uh, before we did the watch along, um, it w wasn't a vintage Manchester United performance, was it? It was weird because in terms of chances and like the way we sort of dominated the game, we were actually pretty good. Like yeah. we had loads of the ball, we made loads of chances, should have got five or six minimum. Like, yeah. you know, Anthony had one where it's two on one on goal, he squares it and misses the pass. Yeah. Uh, Rashford had a similar situation where he tries to square it to Ronaldo, misses the pass, what would have been a tap in. Ronaldo hits the post from five yards out, no goalkeeper in front of him, uh, just a man stood on the line. That's six, that's six to immediately. Yeah. If you just put in these literally incredibly high percentage chances, let alone balls coming to Ronaldo's left foot that he takes a touch and takes too long. Like in, in another, on another day, that could have been seven, eight, two. And obviously conceding two is the problem yeah. because you, you have to be getting clean sheets in these games. We said before the game, or I said before the game, that this is almost like a lose-lose type of match where if you beat him 6-0, people go, oh, yeah, of course you did, it's ammonia. And if you don't, if you lose or you draw or you squeak by 3-2, people are going, that was awful. You know, this, that, you might even lose confidence from beating a team yeah. because it, it was way closer than it needed to be. And it's a shame, really, because, like I said, we, they had about three shots but they scored two goals, so it looks awful. And there were times, you know, we were one nil down at half time, so we can't sit here and say, I always knew we'd win. Yeah. But it felt like United deserved to win. United were clearly the better team, but they just, I, I, I'm just sick of them making hard work of everything all the time. It's just frustrating. Even with everything I've just said about it being a difficult game to win, you know, in terms of mindset, it's, just do it anyway. Just win 4-0. Just win 5-0. Yeah, yeah. Don't concede two goals to AC Ammonia Nicosia. It's just embarrassing. Yeah. Like, I just don't quite get it. What did you think? No, I agree with, with everything you just said there. I mean, listen, you know, a win is always a win, and that's the main thing. But it's just the it, it seems to leave you at times with more questions. Mm. You know, you go into this game, you think, okay, this is probably the ideal game after the defeat against uh, coming in against the team, probably the easiest team we're going to play this season, yeah. unless we get, obviously, you know, an FA Cup draw against, you know, non-league or whatever. But this is as easy as it can get in the, in the, uh, the current situation. And to make hard work, to concede those goals, to go behind, and then to see Ronnie missing all those chances, there's questions about him. Molassia at fault for a goal, getting subbed at half time again. Now, mm. it's suddenly, all of a sudden, a player who looked like he'd been, you know, a breath of fresh air, people going, oh, you know, is he quite cut out for, for this level at the minute anyway? Um, it, you know, it's just it's just the drama you can do without. I mean, there are positives. I don't want to be too negative. Um, Andy Marshall, back, you know, comes on, scores again. He's looked lively when he's, he's featured this season. Uh, Marcus Rashford gets his second brace in three games, I think it is, which is great to see. And he's, you know, back amongst the goals this season. So there's, there's good parts to it, obviously, but it is a little bit disconcerting that you can see it in two goals to a poor team. Let's face facts, they're not a good team, they're not. No. And also one or two players just not at it. And we spoke quite a lot before the game about Jaden Sancho. And I didn't want to dwell on it. We did, we, you know, we got to the point where we said, we feel like we're being a bit harsh on the kid. But, you know, let's move on. But the reason we were talking about him was because still feel like the jury's out. And again, today didn't do anything to, to help get rid of that feeling. No. In, in fact, it added to it because he had a pretty poor first half and then he was subbed. And then the, the player that comes on for him makes the difference. Yeah. And you think, okay, you know, Jaden Sancho, it's still only his second ever season at Manchester United. It's Marcus Rashford's six or seven forever. But against Ammonia, you should be seeing a bit more from him, mm. from Jaden. This is a chance, like, shows your skills, shows what you got. Anthony didn't have a great game, but he had a decent game in the sense that there was some skills there where he beat his man and you could see, like, wow, he's a cut above this level. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Sancho, you didn't really see that. And no. he almost seen that sort of lack of belief or whatever that Tenag was talking about um, after the, the Manchester derby. We saw it again where he gets the ball and he's all, it seems like his automatic thought is to go back not to run at the player or to try and play a little pop it off and, and run, but go back and I don't think it's his fault for the goal at all, but that started with him going backwards to, to Malassia. Malassia's mistake, it's not Jane and Sancho's, but it's just indicative of where Sancho is at the minute. And I think that, you know, if there are any losers from tonight other than obviously Ammonia, it's probably Sancho and Malassia where both of those players now, Malassia, you know, it's different. He's only been at the club two months or whatever. He's had a couple of pretty bad games, but 
I'm sure he's got a bright future. Sancho, though, there's going to be questions. People are going to start yeah. going, is this another? And I've had a message. Sorry, I didn't mean to. No, no, no. I I've had a message and I've seen it on Twitter. I've seen someone saying, is this going to be another Kagawa? Someone saying, is it going to be another Memphis Depay? Mm. You know, these were good players who did well at Dortmund or well at PSV and just didn't have quite what we needed or what it took to be that player at Manchester United. And I'm beginning to worry just slightly that yeah. could be the case with Jaden Sancho. I'm not saying I've given up on him or he ain't good enough, no. especially not after a game against Ammonia. That doesn't tell you a lot. But it's all these just little sort of tidbits or little situations or little, you know, worries you get from these games now and again that build up until eventually, it's like little drops that eventually they overflow and you think mm. Mm, there's something going on here. Yeah, it's, it is a bit odd that like, you saw that Rashford was doing it, Anthony was doing it, Ronaldo was doing it at the end, and some of it was sort of somewhat selfishly. But they all played with the. They seemed to play a slightly different and enhanced version of themselves, with the understanding that the players they were up against were of a, a typically lower quality than you would play week in week out. Anthony was trying a bit more skill. Ronaldo was knocking the ball in behind and running after it. Uh, Rashford knocking the ball out of his feet and, and hitting the ball, uh, shooting time after time. Where Sancho still was playing like he was against Man City, where he gets the ball, he's one on one with his defender. Instead of trying to knock it past him or do a little skill and, uh, and, and create some space for himself, he's just passing it back to Malassia all the time. Yeah. And, and you think, is that a, maybe he's just got no confidence, or maybe he doesn't have the, for whatever reason, he's he's not accessing that sort of risk taking part of his brain or his, of, of his of his of his game. I don't I don't get it because it, he he looks like a player that thinks he isn't good enough to do the things we've seen him do dozens of times for Borussia Dortmund and a handful of times for Man United but he looks like someone that's like oh, I probably shouldn't try and go around this you know right back who is playing at, in the 142nd best team in the world he'll probably do me I'll just pass it back and you think what what's the next step for him when are you going to knock it past him or knock the ball out of your feet and fucking shoot or when are you going to try and clip the ball into the back post or, or with the understanding that your player is going to come there and their defender might not have the ability to sort of mark him and catch him it's like he was still playing against City almost and I don't quite get that because he needs to be a little bit more free with his with his talent and his quality because sometimes you watch him you think are you scared to do st like are you a bit scared to try stuff what is it is it like a willingness lack of Ability, I don't know what it is, but we've seen him do it in the past. I don't, I actually don't understand it to be honest. No, I mean, wingers by nature are inconsistent, yeah, I mean, they always are. You know, even the likes of, of sort of Ryan Giggs or Kinchelski or whatever would have you know days where it's just it weren't happening for him, or, mm. and you know, they're pretty anonymous. But with Sancho, it does seem to be more often than not. And like when we've seen these sort of sparks where you go, okay, the Liverpool game, you know, uh, or was it Leicester as well? you think, yeah, this could be a season out. He's got off to a decent start. And then you have a, a pretty abysmal derby. Then you have another game like this today. And, there's, you know, there have been games this season where he's just not looked, like you say, confident. It does feel weird that a player that did so well at Dortmund, got that big money move. You know, we've seen him for England looking, again, not always dead consistent, but he's had some very good games for England. And you think, OK, you know, he looks like he's a player that belongs at Manchester United. He should be ready for Manchester United against Leeds last season, he looked like, you know, the Jadon Sancho we've seen at Dortmund. But these games, you can almost name him. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like Chelsea, Leeds, you know, like the, the other ones have said. I just feel like there's something, like you say, holding him back slightly. I don't know if it's the system. I don't know if it's the energy levels. I don't know if it's confidence. I don't know what it is. I don't know if he's just trying to play it safe because he thinks like, you know, things aren't quite happening for me at the minute, I'm just going to keep possession or whatever. But he just needs to get back to what it was that made him success at Dortmund because mm. you know there's a player there. Do you know what I mean? We were after him for two seasons for a reason. You know, he was one of Dortmund's best players for a reason and yeah. his numbers were great at Dortmund. He's one of the most productive players in the Bundesliga. You know, he, he, Dortmund don't win a lot of trophies. He helped them win one. Yeah. Literally scored two in the final, I think. Um, so th that is a very good player. And he's only young as well. He's 22, I think. 22. Yeah. So I'm not sitting here going, Sancho, pff, done. What I'm saying is, Sancho, we need to see a bit more from him. Yeah. And and the, my only worry is that it's looking like we're drifting towards a point where now Martial's back, he might find himself on the bench for a, a, a period of games now. Yeah. Because Rashford is our top scorer, top assist of the season. 
Uh, Anthony is in goal scoring form. He scored against City, looked good again tonight in the first half, um, scored against Arsenal. I don't see him getting dropped. No. And Martial comes in and I think he's got two goals and an assist in about 90 or oh, 110 minutes of football this season. Three now, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Three goals, oh, yeah. Three goals sorry, and an assist in, in that time. So, He's not going to get dropped. No. Now he's fit well, again. We said it before the game. Didn't so we? If, he's, if he misses the next ten yeah. games because they all stay fit, then you start to think this can sort of snowball yeah. here. And I hope for his sake that it doesn't. For United's sake as well, because he could be a top player still. Well, we were talking before the game. Some, you know, we were asking who, you know, who'd be strongest team, and I said, you know, my front three would be Martial, Rashford, and, and Anthony. Yeah. And for the reasons you mentioned, you know, you don't spend hundred million euros on a player and drop him. That ain't happening. Do you know no. what I mean? Eric Tenag isn't going to drop Anthony. He's his guy. Anthony Martial, like you mentioned there, banging in goals, fits this system perfectly. Marcus Rashford looks like Marcus of old, almost. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And also, the one thing you know with Eric Tanag is he doesn't owe Jadon Sancho anything. No. He didn't buy him. He didn't bring him in. He didn't, he's not his, his guy. He's not someone who he's like, you know, he's ever made a particular noise about. Do you know what I mean? That first press conference we went to in um, Melbourne, it was Rashford who was sat next to Derek Tenag and he was raving about him. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Was, you know, you can obviously see that he rated the, the kid. He gave him the armband for one of the games over there. He stuck with him and he's been rewarded. You know, he stuck with him down the middle. He stuck with him on the left. And seeing Rashford on the left tonight, again, against poor position, but doing a good job. Martial, who can play, I know he drifted over to the right, but can play down the middle. Mm. It kind of makes sense now, doesn't it, for those three to be the front three, Martial, Anthony and, and Marcus Rashford. It just remains to be seen whether that is what Eric Tenag is going to go with because I think Everton will be the, 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 the key game because coming back into the Premier League, you can't come back into the Premier League and not play what you consider to be your strongest team mm. for the first Premier League game after you've just been battered off City 6-3. So I think you might end up starting those three and I think you're right. I think Jadon Sancho now, I know it's very early doors in the season, but it's probably, if everyone's fit, He's probably on the bench, I think, anyway. I might be wrong. What's mm. the chat saying? Uh, Ammo says, Martial has now scored as many goals, 82, as Cantona for Manchester United. What do you guys think about that? Great. You mentioned, you know, you're up there with Eric Cantona. Obviously, the main difference is Eric Cantona, you know, did it in a short time and won lots of trophies for us, mm. including FA Cup final winning goals and match winning goals in title deciders and all that. I just hope Anthony Martial can continue his, um, his goal scoring form because when he's on it, he's mint. Yeah. There's never been a question about that since his debut onwards. The question is getting him on it. And he seems motivated. He seems to enjoy playing for Eric Ten Hag. The only other question really isn't just his, you know, when he's on it, is his fitness. If he can stay fit, and I think he could be a massive asset for Manchester United this season. Yeah, Nick Bristow, uh, there's no way Ronaldo goes from the best striker in history to pants in three months without confidence and game time not being an issue. I think confidence is definitely an issue. Some of the, the decision-making on his touches was was the decision making of someone that didn't trust themselves to hit the hit the ball first time? The one on his left foot. There was two on his left foot. One where the ball got, came in from the left hand side, and you would think he could just sort of sweep a leg around it, try and put it near post, and he didn't. He took a touch. And the other one where the ball was coming across his body to his left foot, just the goalie in front of him, and instead of drilling it back across goal or trying to again put it in the near post, he takes a touch and ends up spinning around and getting tackled. But he's taking too long on the ball, isn't he? And that's presumably because of uh, confidence rather than, you know, he's, all of a sudden he's dead old. That first one you mentioned there, it reminded me of his return debut against Newcastle, his second goal, mm. where Luke Shaw plays it slightly behind him and he plays it into his left foot. He drags it forward with his left foot mm. and just fires it in. You know, confident on his left foot. I think, he, I'm not sure, I think he might have megged. Um, he did, yeah. Was it Dubravka? I can't remember. It was in, in goal for Newcastle. Um, but yeah, it was, you know, just a confident player, you know, one of the best in the world on either foot, not a drama. Today, all of a sudden, you look like you, you like he doesn't believe in himself, which mm. just sounds insane to say that about Cristiano Ronaldo, but he's a human being. And if you're not scoring goals, if you've got the world commenting on the fact you're having this run and questioning whether you, you know, you, you're done, and you see, you know, there's a new kid on the block in Erling Haaland who's, you know, threatening already. It looks like he's potentially going to break your records if he carries on going the way he's going. Messi's finally got his act together over in France and he's been banging him in. It's like, you know, is, is, is this the end? And it must play on your mind. Mm. No matter how confident you are or, you know, how much belief you have. Like I say, Cristiano Ronaldo's only human. I just hope, no matter what, it just doesn't fizzle out into just somewhat of an embarrassment, embarrassing end. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Someone mentioned Eric Cantona there before. One of the great things about Eric was he left on a high. He left as a, you know, we won the league in his last season and he left with us wanting more and he retired. And I remember thinking, what? Well, how can this happen? 
Do you know what I mean? And it was mm. like, we didn't get to see him missing sitters, you know, no. against Altrincham and, you know, people shouting at him. No. Do you know what I mean? There was none of that. He left on a high and he's, you know, that's part of the, the reason he's such an icon. Um, and I think if Ronaldo does end up going in January or maybe in the summer, I just hope it's on a bit of a high and he can still contribute. Yeah, me too. Um, Marquez uh, says, is it just me or is De Gea been shockingly bad to average this season? I wouldn't say shockingly bad. No. I'd say average. Yeah. I don't think he's been great. No. And I, I, you know, you go back to Ronaldo and his confidence. I think it's got to play on your mind if you're a goalkeeper who's constantly conceding goals. Mm. I know we had those couple of clean sheets, didn't we? Against, was it Leicester and Southampton? Yeah. But we've conceded, you know, was it, I think, you know, obviously De Gea's been in every game. So, you know, two against Brighton, Brighton sorry, four against Brentford. Okay, one against Arsenal, not in the world. The same against Liverpool, but then six against City, mm -hmm. two against Ammonia. Mm. It's, I don't know. It might, it's two must... against Sociedad as well. Sorry, yeah. You know, it's, it's got to play in your mind a little bit. We are conceding, still conceding too many goals. Yeah. Aren't we? And I don't necessarily point the finger at him at many of those. One or two, like the Brentford game, at least two of them are his fault. Yeah. But, you do wonder, don't you, would a different keeper have done better with some of these goals? Mm. Would he have commanded his area? Would he have cut that out? Would he have, you know, parried that a bit better or whatever? Um, so, yeah, I, I don't think he's having a great season by any stretch of the imagination. I don't think it's been shockingly bad. I think it's been probably below average for him, I'd mm. say. Yeah. Um, Josh W says, also think that Rashford is best off the left. Marshall as a nine works perfectly under Ten Hag with Anthony on the right. I think that's a strong front three. That's what we were saying before, isn't it? Yeah. Um, just on Casemiro, because he's a big talking point before the game. He, he, he's still doing this thing where he plays a brilliant pass and you go, who's that? That, fucking, that was a good pass. Casemiro, wow. And then two minutes later, a much, much easier pass yeah. is going straight to an opposition player. Yeah. He's, he's, he's inconsistent, but not in a... You know, not like he has two good games, two bad games. He has one good minute, one bad minute. Yeah. It's a, it's very weird with him. He's at the done minute, that since he's come in, hasn't it? Yeah. Like even when he came on against was it Leicester? Yeah. And it was like one minute it looked like oh yeah cl class, and the next minute it's like what are you doing? He's the Arsenal. Like, what are you doing? Getting Do you know Maguire I mean? booked. Yeah, and everyone hammering Maguire, and I'll criticise him when he deserves it, but it wasn't his fault. He was you know he was given a right a pig's ear to deal with by uh, Casemiro. So it is strange. I think. He's just getting used to new environment, new teammates, new everything. He'll be fine. You can see his quality. He's not, you know, we're not talking about a 37 year old age. He's 30. Yeah. It doesn't seem like fitness is an issue with him. I think he's just been a little bit erratic, settling into a new midfield alongside Bruno and Eriksson. And it can work. I think it can work. He's also, he's not had, you know, many full games as he's not had a, a proper start, really. He's had a couple, I think. But I'm, I expect he might start getting edged in now in the Premier League. Mm. I I don't see him staying on the bench for the rest of the season. No. I think, I like McTominay, but I think sooner or later McTominay's going to make way for him. Yeah, I agree. Um, right, I think we should wrap it up there. Sounds good, um, We're back on Sunday, aren't we, for the watch-along for Manchester United versus Everton. We'll be there for that. Yeah, man, me yeah, and V. Um, we'll have Housen later on as well, won't we, giving his yeah, reaction Stephen to... Stephen Housen with his reaction. Tonight's game as well, so make sure you're checking it out. If you're not doing, go and check out Sloppy Joes. You can find Joe Smith on there. Make sure you're subscribing to this channel, though. Mm -hmm. Make sure you are hitting that subscribe button, and there should be a link in the chat as well. So hit the subscribe button, because, listen... It's not been the greatest day, but we've put the Derby Day defeat mm. behind us, sort of. Now we're going to Everton, yeah? Martial scoring, Marcus Rashford scoring, and he's taking the piss out of people, yeah? Don't worry about it. We'll be fine. Thanks for watching.